Thank you. Our second speaker is talking from persuasive influence, <coughs> level one. Understanding your leadership style. The task of the <coughs> speech is to share some aspect of a chosen leadership style, or leadership styles in general. Discuss the style preference when working with others, how to adapt the chosen leadership style to situations, all leadership styles in general, and how they may impact a group. The title of the speech is The Servant and the Queen. The speech will be five to seven minutes time. Please give a warm welcome to Ruth Ansell with The Servant and the Queen. Good morning, Toastmasters and guests, Kaylin <laughs> and Dave. The title of the speech is The Servant and the Queen. Rough around the edges, barking orders, get it done. Do as I say, you will listen to me. To start out, I was something of a bull in a china shop. It was my way or the highway. I wanted everyone to do my bidding. Let me share with you my journey of growth in leadership. How I moved from one behavior profile to the other. How I learned what was more effective through the school of hard knocks. I went from behavior profile type D for dominance to I for influence. Can I have a show of hands? Who has heard of the disc wheel? D-I-S-C. So are we familiar with the colors? Mm -hmm. Who can tell me what does the color red represent? Okay. Dominance. 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 Yes, very good. How about yellow? Yes, yes, that's true. What about, okay, now we'll save some questions for other people. What about blue? It must be analysis of peaceful. Conscientious and steady. Green. So we have the four personality profiles. These are the behavior profiles proposed by William Moulton Marston in his 1928 book, Emotions of Normal People. I'm going to share with you the before, the lessons, and the after. We'll start with the before. I have a sister who was born many, many, many years apart from me. My mom was in her 40s when she had Jenny. Right before I started university, I took a break from my life path and I spent some years looking after my baby sister. When I wanted Jenny to listen to me, I would bark out, no, don't do that. Come here, read this, do that, go there. I was the queen who gave all the orders. <laughs> Did it help? Did it manage to keep Jenny safe and out of trouble? Not really. Jenny fell over one time as a toddler, banging her head onto the cold, hard tiles. And I was the one who knocked her over as I stood up to bark out an order. I was crushed. Another time, I commanded her, don't touch that. What did she do? Her sweet, squishy little baby hands were placed atop the steam outlet of the rice cooker. She screamed for comfort. As I watched in that moment, I could see all my commands, all my rough, pushy, insistent energy didn't help at all. Time would go by, and yet I wouldn't change. After all, it seemed to me, the deep predominance energy would pay off somewhat, so I believed. It seemed to pay off as I funded my way through university, working and studying, furiously saving up each semester's tuition the term before. Push hard, you can make it happen. Push people, you can make it happen. 
I know because I push myself. The D for dominance energy appeared to pay off when I ran a small language school of five teachers, 70 students, push my weight around, people do what I want, make it happen. The D for dominance energy appeared to me to pay off when I said goodbye to the stable domestic life I'd known and moved countries for a fresh start with my one-year-old son. I'm strong, I can do anything, don't listen to what people say. That was what I thought. So if the D for dominance energy worked so well before, well, why didn't it work when I took up employment in a Kiwi office? I was working in insurance, representing legal terms, fixed in stone. So why did that broker get offended and complain? What was he on about? Why did that colleague suddenly consider me an enemy instead of the friend that I was trying to be? I was just telling her my thoughts. <laughs> why did that boss welcome me to the team with open arms? and then want me gone. The learnings. I discovered that if you dominate people, if you try and tell them what to do and push them around, guess what? They don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like it. What? <clears throat> the model of command and control is dated. People these days, they're in touch with their feelings. They're more aware. They know how they should be treated. So I discovered, if you wanted to get anywhere with people, you needed to work with hearts and minds. Command and control, that may have worked for Frederick Winslow Taylor as he applied engineering principles to the factory floor, but these days, it just doesn't cut it. If you want to get anywhere with people, Tap into what they're feeling. Understand them. Listen to them. Connect. It, it's no longer about command and control, but communicate and commit. Now, the after. One day, many years later, I ended up working with a team member named Jessica. Jessica was defensive and narrow-minded. There was no way to even lead her into the water. Push her a little, and she cried. You had to bring out the box of tissues in every performance meeting. <laughs> oh, yet, over the next 18 months, I would coach Jessica, inspiring her around the company's purpose and values, what she could achieve, her future with the team. Due to my encouragement, Jessica would go on to complete our in-house training course and achieve stellar results, standing out from the crowd. This change was able to occur because I wasn't the queen who gave all the orders. I was the humble servant seeking to understand, support, and influence. This allowed me to unlock Jessica's full potential. In summary, leadership is not a game of winning by control. It is a humble commitment to understanding and influencing those around you for the best outcomes. It took me many, many years, but I finally learned, if you want to get anywhere with people, your best bet is to play the role of servant rather than queen. Toast.